Yes! He's dead! He is gone! He has left us! We are free from him! Ha ha! All this time having to watch this character dynamic ruin shoved in for no reason looks like he shat out of a marketing department tier one deck creating bastard is now gone! Yes! And oh, it was so glorious! So yeah, Soulburner finally lost. Uh, <laughs> as uh, many of you know, I don't like Soulburner. I don't like the fact that he basically got thrown in here, pretty much hijacked everything, was basically turned into this perfect duelist who beats other characters we'd rather watch instead of him, and ultimately he never really contributed that much to the story. He really didn't do anything or have any real interesting interactions with Yusaku, and his backstory was kind of okay, but never really did much. So yeah, needless to say, I was really happy to finally see this freaking male power fantasy character just take one for the team. Oh, it was awesome. It was also actually really well done. I know a lot of people are probably just expecting this video to just be a hate on soul burner uh, video, but I swear, that's it. I'm, I got it out of my system. We can just talk about what actually happened because I actually thought, my personal opinion of the character aside, this was actually a really well done, really creative, and honestly kind of tragic way to do a trope that they just did like five episodes ago. Like, when you really think about it, this is verbatim exactly what happened with Aoi. Character sets up his big moral reason for why he has to win, has several moments in the duel where you feel like he's going to win, sets up a trope within the duel with why you think he's going to win, shows off a cool new boss monster, only for Bowen to be like, ha ha, this, and then loses and has a sad moment where everyone is like, oh shit, oh no. But... What worked about it better here was that they really put everything into selling this. They really wanted you to feel like Soulburner had a shot. They really wanted it to suck when he lost, and they actually did a pretty good job of it. First up, Soulburner is, and I swear I don't necessarily mean this as a criticism, like I said, I'm done with that. Soulburner is, to all accounts, a much more cliche character than I think arguably anyone else in the show. He's very by the numbers, he's very shonen y. And so naturally, you expect that moment where he gets all fired up, where he gets all angry, where he's ready to go in and take revenge. That's the moment where he's going to win. That's the moment where he's going to find it in himself to bring up that spirit and just do it. And it's so cruel when you realize that that indomitable human spirit means nothing in front of, to all extensive purposes, a perfect AI. AI, an AI that is so powerful, it has mastered the art of luck to get exactly what he wants. And after using that luck, basically in a pure luck fashion, to mess with Soulburner and get the upper hand in the duel, Soulburner finally tries luck for himself, works out only for that to be the moment cold hard logic comes in and play. That is a cruel thing to do, and it's actually a really clever way to sort of just have that moment where it's like, no, he did it. He did everything right. He even still had cards in his hand. Like, I half expected he was, when the water, when uh, Bowman did his final play, he's going to like, oh no, but my two cards, they can do whatever I need them to do. And just in general, Soulburner's plays in the duels, he did everything right. He followed the formula. Hell, he even summoned the thing Salamangrates do to save their asses in time. Like, he did everything right, so it just kind of makes it feel all the more crueler when he just loses to this guy who never feels like he's behind, who never feels like he's uh, insignificant, who never has that moment where he feels like he's in danger, and you feel it because you had all those shonen tropes that just years of anime have taught us 
to believe will ensure his victory. So it really was a clever way to do it, and I actually really just did feel sorry for the guy. As a guy who seems to always lose the die roll when he goes up against control decks, I know that feeling. You also have the little thing going on with Flame, another thing that would make you feel like Soulburner was being set up to win. That was really cool. Like, I love when Windy came out. I loved the animation in the scene. It had this really gross, organic look to it. I'm sure some people will make memes, or should make memes, out of the fact that Windy's entire thing is that uh, Flame basically puked or cummed him out, depending on how dirty you want to get, and then basically was talking about, oh, what I did to you while I was inside of you. <laughs> uh, but no, it's it's actually really good. I love the sound effects they use. I love the look. Just that sort of organic, just sucking the life out of him look. It has this very haunting effect to it, especially because I liked Flame a hell of a lot more than I liked Soulburner. And so to see Flame, like, sacrifice himself to save Soulburner and to sort of be like, I'm trusting everything to you, all these things, and it, again, it really makes you feel like Flame died in vain. Well, I say died, like, we all can probably figure they're coming back. Uh, but that whole thing, it was actually just really good and a very cruel, effective way to make it hit when he loses. Um, I think I covered all the bases. It was just a really good, fun duel. Uh, seeing Salaman Great get a Link 4 is a little nerve-wracking, and uh, two cards that let them do Reincarnation Link Summoning bust out bigger monsters during the battle phase is a little scary going further into the metagame that they are dominating. Uh, but yeah, all that was good. The last thing there is to talk about, and this also kind of played into the cruelness of the situation, is the little bit with Yusaku. Um, that was also pretty nice. Like, I almost wonder if the idea is supposed to be that him being unconscious is not him literally being unconscious, but just, like, having to take out Kusunagi had him mentally check out, and he, like, lost connection with his AI. I don't know if that's, um, or, like, his, uh, the soul, the playmaker avatar. I don't know if that's the point, but I kind of would like to. I think that's sort of a very interesting way. But, yeah, just his whole sort of sitting at this table and just sort of like him being, I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it, I'm done, I'm sick of it. He has every right to feel that, and you totally feel that. So when Kusunagi tells him, come on, man, you got one last thing to do, get up, you pussy, and he does wake up, it almost feels like he's just kind of getting up to be like, all right. And then he's seeing Soulburner playing, and he sees Soulburner in a position to win, and he's like, all right, we can do this, we can do this, and then nope loses another person, loses um, arguably one of the only real people in this world he can connect with, and just kind of is left standing there, like just the only thing left for him is just take out Bowman. Although obviously it looks like uh, next is Revolver versus Lightning, which I can't wait for that, that looks uh, really cool. But yeah, all in all, I thought this was a much more clever, interesting way of doing something they've kind of done in this show several times before, and I just thought it was very effective. Uh, but tell me what you thought about this episode below. I'm sure there are Soul Burner fans. I haven't met any, and even people who say they're okay with the character acknowledge they have problems with him. Uh, but no, yeah, tell me if that worked for you, if you thought maybe they shouldn't have done the same basic formula they did a few episodes ago again tell me about that below and as for the tcg question of the week everyone else is talking about it i might as well too dual power has been moved up in street release date to the same day as the potential next ban list come out does this mean we will get one that day well i don't really like to speculate about the stuff beforehand because i feel like i'll always be wrong and also i don't spend as much time analyzing the meta as say robbie cole or john moore or simo um i it, it looks it it genuinely does um so do you think there's risk fat also tool powers full spoiler list came out this set actually looks like it's gonna be really cool um, tell me what your thoughts on that below, and if you'd like for me to do a ban list prediction video, I do, even though, like I said, I don't really like to, I kind of have an interesting idea in mind, and if you all know me, you can probably guess where I'm probably going with this, uh, and <laughs> tell me all that below, and as always, click to like, click to subscribe, and join me next time for the battle of the weirdo sociopaths.